of the city of Delhi, Ms. Pauline Kirki, Deputy Mayor Rabin Baldeep Singh, Secretary General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ms. Yuka Brandt, distinguished ambassadors, their spouses, friends from far and wide who have gathered here this evening. It is with great joy and pride that I stand before you at this special event organized jointly by the Embassy of India and the Netherlands India Association and other community organizations to mark the 71st anniversary of India's independence. I am grateful to the Honorable Mayor and the Secretary General, the Distinguished Ambassadors and all who have come here to celebrate with us and to make this evening memorable. As was mentioned by the President, this is the first fifth year that NIA has brought together various community organizations and organized an event of this nature. But this is the first year that the Embassy of India is joining them and partnering this effort. And I think this is particularly appropriate because ultimately the freedom of India was won by the people of India. And the, those who sustained that freedom over the last 70 years are also the people of India. And those who will mold the future of India are the people of India. And Mia represents the people of India. <laughs> Equally, Nia also represents the people of Netherlands. And the people of this, they are very happy. The Netherlands as a country, the government of Netherlands and the people of Netherlands are truly special to us. Because at that moment, on August 15, 1947, when the British flag came down and the Indian tricolor that you see behind came up, the ambassador of Netherlands was already present there. They have been witness to the 70-year journey of India. <laughs> Friends, when India attained freedom, our first Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, made a speech at the hour of midnight, 14th night, 15th early morning, in the Central Hall of Parliament which is well known, it is known as his Trist with Destiny speech. And in this speech, he said, a moment comes, which comes but rarely in history. When we step out from the old to the new, when an age ends, when the soul of a nation, long suppressed, finds utterance. He also said in that speech, the achievement we celebrate today, is but a step, an opening of opportunity to the greater triumphs and achievements that await us. Are we brave enough and wise enough to grasp this opportunity and accept the challenge of the future? Anniversaries are occasions for stock taking. Where did India start in 1947? Where has it reached? and what distance remains. In my view, consolidating India's unity and integrity, making a success of our nation-building experiment is the single most important achievement of India in the last 70 years. It is well known, and this audience I'm sure reflects it, India is a country of enormous diversity, a subcontinent rolled into one. Every known religion in the world is present in our country. Over 100 different languages and 1,600 dialects are used in everyday life. Every state of our country has its own culture, its own history, food, dress, and traditions. India was born desperately poor. And in the midst of a partition with communal carnage all around, and one of the largest refugee movements ever recorded in history. Over six to seven million people came from Pakistan to India and an equal number went from India to Pakistan. The colonial power did not make things easy. Directly ruled areas within India was divided on the basis of religion 
and 562 princely states or kingdoms were given the opportunity to choose to be independent or to join India or Pakistan. 70 years after independence, we in India say with confidence, we are 1.3 billion people welded together as a strong nation. India is equally proud to be the largest democracy in the world. The first task the new nation did was to adopt a constitution which sets itself, which sets the country the goal of securing to all citizens justice, social, economic and political and guarantees liberty of thought expression, belief, faith, and worship. 67 years after adoption of this constitution, 70 years after independence, the Indian constitution stands strong and tall. The institutions created by it, such as the independent judiciary, the autonomous election commission, the free press, and vibrant civil society are our pride and the pillars on which our democracy exists. India has seen general elections to our parliament 16 times. And while governments have changed many, many times, never has any election been questioned. In Europe, there are countries which have succumbed to military rule and to authoritarian rule where constitutions have been subverted. But never in India in the last 70 years. Yes, friends, please. The last general election in India, held in 2014, had at, as its electorate a mind-boggling number of 840 million people. 550 million people actually voted using electronic voting machines across the length and breadth of the country. Friends, India's economic rate, rate growth rate was 0 to 1 percent during the 50 years before our independence during colonial rule. In the last decade, India's growth rate has averaged around 8%, making us the fastest growing large economy in the world. The International Monetary Fund estimates that India will grow at 7.2% in 2017-18 and 7.7% in 2018-19. India is today the third largest economy in the world when calculated in purchasing power parity terms with a GDP of US dollar 7.2 trillion. If calculated in nominal terms, it still is huge, US dollar 2.7 trillion. Our annual per capita income since the days of independence has grown 27 times. Poverty level has declined from 60% to 25%. Life expectancy has doubled. Literacy has gone up from 18% to 74%. In the early days of independence, India had to survive on gifts and import of food grades from the wealthy countries of the world. Today, we not only produce enough to feed ourselves, but we are also exporting food grades. Rice from India comes to this wonderful country. India is the second largest producer in the world of wheat, rice, fruits, vegetables, sugar cane, and oil seeds. She is the largest producer in the world of milk, pulses, spices, tea, and cash. In, in, in 1947, India had hardly any industry worth its name. Today, India is amongst the 10 top manufacturing nations of the world. A special mention for India's space program, our space program put a record 104 satellites into orbit from a single rocket in February of this year, including one from TU Delft of Netherlands. Not only has India reached the moon, we have also reached the Mars, one of four, including the European Space Agency, to reach. And this was achieved at the very first attempt by India and at a cost less than the cost of production of the Hollywood film Grant.
we are an example for frugal innovation. Lest you think India's success is only in the field of economy and technology, let me mention we do not neglect education and our children. India has the largest midday meal scheme for students, serving 10 million children in over 1 million schools. Ladies and gentlemen, India's culture and traditional knowledge continue to gain a growing number of fans across the world. Indian food, yoga, traditional medicine, music, dance and movies are known everywhere. Netherlands alone, from a quick search on Google, has 160 yoga schools and over 100 Indian restaurants. India, every year, produces the largest number of movies in the world, higher than Hollywood. And if anybody in the world can take on Hollywood, it is our Hollywood. <laughs> Friends, I have elaborated these achievements in detail, but I do so with humility. I am conscious, and India recognizes, that there is much distance that remains to be covered. We are aware there is no room for complacency. The strength of any democratic society lies in its ability to prospect, acknowledge mistakes, post correct, and reorder priorities. Our Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, and I would urge every one of you to read the speech which he has delivered today morning in Delhi or to see it on YouTube. Our Prime Minister has called upon the people of the country to make a new India in five years by 2022. A new India free of poverty, free of dirt, free of corruption, free of terrorism, casteism and communalism. The government has launched with great energy and enthusiasm a number of flagship schemes such as the Clean India program, the Clean Ganga program, the Smart Cities program, the Make in India program, the Startup India, Stand Up India program, the Beti Bachao and Beti Padao program. Beti Bachao and Beti Padao, ladies and gentlemen, means save the girl child, educate the girl child, showing our government's commitment to the cause of the girl child. These, these programs reveal the areas in which we think India needs to do much better. And at the same time, the confidence that we have that we can transform India within a very short period of time. As India approaches its 71st India Independence Day, as it celebrates the 71st Independence Day, we approach the world with legitimate pride and faith in the future. We are one of the youngest nations in the world. India's diversity and long tradition of tolerance and pluralism constitute the essence of the idea of India. And we are determined to preserve and nurture it at all times. India is a country which has always been open to the world and welcomed those from abroad into our midst. Our struggle for freedom was a struggle not just to liberate ourselves, but to liberate all suppressed people anywhere in the world. Our success and achievements are not just for our benefit, but for our whole, but for the whole world. Our ancient Indian philosophy teaches us. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Let the whole world enjoy happiness and prosperity. When the people of India chant the Shanti Mantra, Shanti means peace. When we chant the Shanti Mantra, we pray for peace. Not just for people of India, but for people across the world. And even more important, for plants for animals and for Mother Earth herself. India believes it can and must make a contribution to addressing the challenges that the world confronts. Whether it be poverty, terrorism, climate change, tackling natural disasters and pandemics. It stands ready to work with the rest of the world and opposes all efforts to divide people into fragments through the building of narrow domestic walls. As we complete 70 years, we are delighted that our friendship with the people and government of Netherlands has gone from strength to strength. India and Netherlands share common values and are committed to the same national and international goals. Our relations today stands poised to climb even greater heights in the coming days, particularly following the visit of Prime Minister Modi to Netherlands. India provides the Netherlands 
a huge economic opportunity. Netherlands has important strengths in the areas where India has the greatest needs. A special bridge which connects the two countries together is all of you here, the Indian community in the Netherlands. Members of this community are educated, hardworking, law-abiding and well integrated into local communities. I salute all of you and pay tribute to your success and your achievements. At the same time, I urge every Indian, every person of India here on the soil of the Netherlands, please do your utmost for the success of the economy of this country and for the welfare of the people of the Netherlands. Madam Mayor, Madam Secretary General, I would like to assure both of you that the government of India and that the Indian community here stands ready to strengthen your hands in all your endeavors and to extend every support possible in every which way we can. Thank you very much. Jay.